After my defeat at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, I was exiled to the remote island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean. Far from the grandeur of power and the adoration of my people, I found myself confined to a life of isolation and reflection. On St. Helena, I occupied myself with writing, penning memoirs, and reflecting on my life and the events that had led to my downfall. I pondered the choices I had made, the alliances I had formed, and the consequences of my ambition. Despite the bitterness of exile, I remained resolute in my belief that my cause was just and that history would ultimately vindicate me. I continued to receive visitors, engaging in intellectual discussions and sharing my insights with those who sought my counsel. As the years passed, my health began to deteriorate, and I faced the inevitable approach of death. In the final moments of my life, I reflected on the tumultuous journey that had brought me to this point. I pondered the sacrifices made by those who had followed me, the victories and defeats that had shaped my destiny, and the indelible mark I had left on the world. In my final breath, I whispered a silent prayer for the future of France and the world. I hoped that the lessons of my life and the tumultuous era in which I had lived would serve as a cautionary tale for future generations. And so, on May 5, 1821, I passed away, leaving behind a legacy that would be both celebrated and debated for centuries to come. My name, Napoleon Bonaparte, would forever be etched in the annals of history as a symbol of ambition, military genius, and the tumultuous nature of power. I, Napoleon Bonaparte, was born on August 15, 1769, on the island of Corsica, a small and rugged piece of land off the coast of France. My father, Carlo Maria di Bonaparte, was a lawyer of modest means, while my mother, Letizia Ramolino, was a strong-willed and intelligent woman who instilled in me a love for learning and a thirst for greatness. As a young boy, I was sent to mainland France to receive an education at the prestigious military academy of Brienne-le-Chateau. Despite facing discrimination as a Corsican, I excelled in my studies, particularly in mathematics and military strategy. My natural intelligence and determination quickly earned me the attention and admiration of my instructors. After completing my education, I embarked on a military career that would propel me to unimaginable heights. I served with distinction in the French Revolutionary Army, rapidly rising through the ranks and earning the respect of my superiors. My tactical brilliance and strategic vision were evident in numerous battles, including the successful campaign in Italy. In the midst of the chaos of the French Revolution, I seized the opportunity to assert my power and influence. In 1799, I orchestrated a coup d'état, overthrowing the existing government and establishing the consulate. As first consul, I consolidated my authority and implemented a series of reforms that brought stability and order to France. With the support of the French people, I declared myself emperor in 1804, taking the name Napoleon Bonaparte. I embarked on a series of military campaigns that would forever reshape the political landscape of Europe. From the Battle of Austerlitz to the Battle of Waterloo, my victories were legendary, and my military genius became the stuff of legend. As emperor, I implemented sweeping reforms in France, including the Napoleonic Code, which codified laws and established a sense of equality before the law. I also embarked on ambitious projects to modernize and beautify the country, leaving a lasting legacy of architectural marvels. As I reflect on my life and achievements, I am filled with a sense of pride and accomplishment. I have conquered nations, reshaped Europe, and left an indelible mark on history. My name has become synonymous with greatness, and my legacy will endure for generations to come. However, I am also acutely aware of the sacrifices and hardships endured by those who fought alongside me and the French people. The wars I waged have left a trail of destruction and the lives lost will forever haunt my conscience. In the twilight of my days, I find solace in the knowledge that my actions have shaped the course of history and that my name will forever be remembered as one of the greatest military leaders and statesmen of all time. In the years following my death, my legacy continued to grow, both in France and around the world. My military campaigns and political achievements became the stuff of legend, and my name became synonymous with greatness and ambition. 
My reforms, particularly the Napoleonic Code, had a profound impact on the legal systems of many countries, laying the groundwork for modern civil law. My military strategies and tactics were studied and emulated by future military leaders, shaping the art of war for generations to come. My influence extended beyond the realms of politics and warfare. Artists and writers drew inspiration from my life, immortalizing me in their works. My image, captured in countless portraits and sculptures, became a symbol of power and authority. However, my legacy was not without controversy. Critics pointed to the wars I waged, the lives lost, and the authoritarian nature of my rule. Debates continue to this day about the true nature of my accomplishments and the moral implications of my actions. Regardless of the differing opinions, my name remains synonymous with ambition, military prowess, and the tumultuous nature of power. I have become a symbol of the complexities of history, a reminder of the fine line between heroism and villainy. As the years pass, my memory continues to be celebrated and debated, with historians, scholars, and enthusiasts delving into the depths of my life and the impact I had on the world. My story serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the consequences of unchecked ambition and the fragile nature of power. As I look back on my tumultuous life and the events that shaped my destiny, I am compelled to reflect on the lessons I have learned and the wisdom that has come with age. First and foremost, I have come to understand the fleeting nature of power and the dangers of unchecked ambition. The pursuit of glory and dominion can lead to the downfall of nations and the suffering of countless lives. It is a lesson that I, in my youthful arrogance, failed to fully grasp. I have also learned the importance of balance and moderation. In my quest for greatness, I often neglected the well-being of those around me, leading to the alienation of friends and allies. True leadership requires empathy, humility, and a willingness to listen to the voices of others. Furthermore, I have come to appreciate the complexities of history and the multifaceted nature of human nature. The actions I took, while driven by noble intentions, have been interpreted and judged by different perspectives. It is a reminder that history is not always black and white, and that the truth lies somewhere in the gray areas between. In the twilight of my days, I find solace in the knowledge that my legacy, for better or for worse, will endure. I have left an indelible mark on the world, shaping the course of history and inspiring future generations. My name will forever be associated with ambition, military prowess, and the tumultuous nature of power. As I approach the end of my journey, I offer a final piece of advice to those who seek to navigate the complexities of life and power. Strive for greatness, but do so with humility and a deep understanding of the consequences of your actions. Seek to learn from the past, but do not be bound by it. And above all, remember that the pursuit of power is not an end in itself, but a means to create a better world for those who come after you. Beyond the military campaigns and political intrigues, I, Napoleon Bonaparte, was a man with a heart, desires, and personal struggles. In the midst of my rise to power and the tumultuous events that defined my life, I experienced moments of joy, love, and sorrow. I was deeply devoted to my family, particularly my mother, Letizia Ramolino, who instilled in me a love for learning and a strong sense of duty. Her unwavering support and guidance were instrumental in shaping my character and ambitions. In my personal life, I found solace and companionship in the arms of my wife, Josephine de Beauharnais. Her beauty, wit, and intelligence captivated me, and our love was a source of great joy and comfort. However, our marriage was fraught with challenges, as our political ambitions often clashed and our personal desires diverged. Throughout my life, I also experienced moments of loneliness and isolation. The weight of my responsibilities and the constant scrutiny of others left little room for personal connections and moments of respite. I often yearned for the simplicity and joy of a normal life, free from the burdens of power. In the darkest moments of my exile, I turned to my faith for solace and strength. I found solace in the teachings of the Catholic Church and sought comfort in prayer and reflection. My faith served as a reminder of the importance of humility, forgiveness, and the eternal nature of the human soul. As I reflect on my life, I am reminded that behind the grandeur of power and the legacy I have left behind, 
I was, at my core, a human being. I experienced the full spectrum of emotions, faced personal struggles, and sought meaning and purpose in a world filled with chaos and uncertainty. And so, as I bid farewell to this mortal realm, I leave behind not only a legacy of power and conquest, but also a reminder of the complexities and vulnerabilities of the human spirit. May future generations remember that even the most formidable leaders are still subject to the same joys, sorrows, and desires that define the human experience. Beyond the military campaigns and political intrigues, I, Napoleon Bonaparte, left behind a human legacy that transcends the realm of power and conquest. In the annals of history, I am remembered not only as a military I, leader, but also as a man who touched the lives of those around him. Throughout my rule, I sought to improve the lives of the French people. I implemented social reforms that aimed to promote equality, education, and economic growth. I abolished feudal privileges, established a merit-based system of government, and introduced policies that supported the arts and sciences. In the realm of education, I placed great emphasis on the value of knowledge and the importance of intellectual development. I founded schools, universities, and academies, ensuring that the brightest minds had access to education and the opportunity to contribute to the progress of society. My passion for the arts and culture also left a lasting impact. I patronized artists, writers, and musicians, fostering a vibrant cultural scene that flourished under my rule. The arts became a reflection of the grandeur and ambition of the Napoleonic era, immortalizing my name in the annals of history. Beyond France, my influence extended to the wider world. My military campaigns and political achievements inspired revolutions and movements for independence across Europe and beyond. My ideas of nationalism, constitutionalism, and the rights of the people resonated with those seeking to break free from the shackles of tyranny. In the hearts and minds of many, I became a symbol of hope, a beacon of change in a world plagued by oppression and inequality. My name became synonymous with the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity, and my legacy continues to inspire generations to fight for justice and human rights. As I reflect on my life and the impact I have had on the world, I am humbled by the recognition and admiration that has been bestowed upon me. I am reminded that the true measure of a person's legacy lies not in the power they wielded or the battles they won, but in the lives they touched and the ideals they championed. As I, Napoleon Bonaparte, reflect on my life and the events that shaped my destiny, I offer a series of lessons that can be gleaned from my experiences. While ambition can drive greatness, it must be tempered with responsibility. The pursuit of power should not come at the expense of the well-being of others or the stability of society. The world is ever-changing, and leaders must adapt to new circumstances. Flexibility, strategic thinking, and the ability to learn from both successes and failures are essential qualities for any leader. Strength is necessary to achieve goals, but it must be balanced with compassion and empathy for the people. A leader who cares for the welfare of their subjects will earn their loyalty and support. Education is the key to progress and the empowerment of individuals. By investing in education, we can unlock the potential of future generations and create a society that values knowledge and intellectual growth. In times of crisis, Unity is crucial. Leaders must inspire and bring people together, fostering a sense of shared purpose and common goals. Only through unity can we overcome the challenges that face us. Personal integrity and honesty are essential qualities for any leader. Upholding one's principles and being transparent in actions and decisions will earn the trust and respect of others. The choices we make and the actions we take have a lasting impact on the world. We must consider the consequences of our decisions and strive to leave a positive legacy for future generations. Leaders have the ability to inspire and motivate others. By setting an example and communicating a compelling vision, leaders can inspire greatness in those around them. History provides valuable lessons that can guide us in the present. By studying the successes and failures of the past, we can make more informed decisions and avoid repeating the mistakes of others. Power is fleeting and even the most formidable leaders will eventually face the test of time. We must remember that true greatness lies not in the accumulation of power, but in the impact we have on the lives of others and the lasting legacy we leave behind.
Napoleon Bonaparte's military campaigns and strategic brilliance have left an indelible mark on the field of military strategy. His innovative tactics, bold maneuvers, and ability to adapt to changing circumstances have influenced military leaders throughout history and continue to shape modern warfare. Napoleon's emphasis on speed and mobility in warfare revolutionized military strategy. He recognized the importance of rapidly deploying troops and exploiting weaknesses in enemy positions, often catching his opponents off guard and achieving decisive victorias. Napoleon understood the value of concentrating forces at critical points on the battlefield. By focusing his troops and resources on a single objective, he was able to overwhelm enemy defenses and achieve breakthroughs. Napoleon's ability to adapt his strategies and tactics to changing circumstances was a hallmark of his success. He was known for his quick thinking and willingness to adjust his plans in response to unexpected events, allowing him to exploit opportunities and overcome challenges. Napoleon placed great emphasis on coordination and communication among his troops. He established efficient systems for transmitting orders, ensuring that his commanders were able to execute his plans effectively and respond to changing situations on the battlefield. Napoleon recognized the importance of psychological warfare in achieving victory. He understood that morale and the psychological state of troops played a significant role in determining the outcome of battles. He employed tactics such as surprise attacks, intimidation, and propaganda to demoralize his enemies and boost the morale of his own troops. Napoleon was a master of utilizing artillery in battle. He recognized the destructive power of artillery and employed it strategically to soften enemy defenses, create gaps in lines, and provide support for infantry and cavalry advances. Napoleon's preference for offensive warfare and his belief in the superiority of the attack over the defense continue to influence military strategy. His emphasis on taking the initiative, launching surprise attacks, and exploiting weaknesses in enemy positions has become a cornerstone of offensive tactics, understood the value of combining different arms of the military to achieve maximum effectiveness on the battlefield. He integrated infantry, cavalry, artillery, and engineering units to create a cohesive and versatile fighting force. Napoleon Bonaparte's legacy in military strategy continues to inspire military leaders and shape the way wars are fought. His innovative tactics, adaptability, and emphasis on speed, mobility, and coordination have left a lasting impact on military thinking and continue to be studied and applied in modern warfare. Napoleon Bonaparte's rise to power and his subsequent rule left an indelible mark on political thought and the development of modern political systems. His ideas, reforms, and the institutions he established continue to shape political discourse and inspire political leaders around the world. Napoleon's consolidation of power and the establishment of a strong central government set a precedent for modern authoritarian regimes. His emphasis on strong leadership, efficient administration, and the concentration of power in the hands of a single individual has influenced political systems that prioritize centralized authority. Napoleon's codification of laws and administrative reforms had a lasting impact on the legal and administrative systems of many countries. The Napoleonic Code, with its emphasis on equality before the law and individual rights, continues to serve as a foundation for legal systems in many parts of the world. Campaigns and the concept of the nation-state that he championed have had a profound influence on the development of nationalism. His efforts to unite people under a common identity and create a cohesive nation-states have shaped the political landscape and the concept of national sovereignty. Napoleon's emphasis on meritocracy and the selection of officials based on their abilities rather than their social status has had a lasting impact on the concept of public service, the idea of a professional and efficient bureaucracy, where individuals are appointed based on their qualifications, continues to be a guiding principle in modern governance. Napoleon's rule raises questions about the balance between democracy and authoritarianism. While he established institutions that provided some elements of popular participation, such as the Senate, his ultimate authority and the suppression of dissent highlight the challenges of reconciling democratic ideals with strong centralized rule. Napoleon's ideas and the cult of personality that surrounded him have given rise to the concept of Napoleonism. This political ideology emphasizes the importance of strong leadership, national greatness, and the pursuit of glory, and continues to resonate with some political leaders and movements.
Napoleon's rise to power and his association with the ideals of the French Revolution, such as liberty, equality, and fraternity, have left a lasting impact on political thought. The influence of these revolutionary ideals can be seen in the development of democratic systems and the promotion of individual rights and freedoms. Napoleon Bonaparte's influence on political thought extends beyond his own era, shaping the development of modern political systems and inspiring political leaders throughout history. His ideas, reforms, and the institutions he established continue to be studied and debated, providing valuable insights into the complexities of political power, governance, and the pursuit of national greatness. Napoleon Bonaparte's rule had a profound impact on the world of art and culture, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to inspire artists and shape artistic movements. His patronage, aesthetic sensibilities, and the cultural policies he implemented had a significant influence on the development of art during his time and beyond. Napoleon embraced the neoclassical style of art, which drew inspiration from ancient Greek and Roman art and architecture. He saw himself as the embodiment of the Roman emperor and encouraged artists to create works that celebrated his achievements and glorified the ideals of the French Revolution, such as liberty, equality, and the pursuit of glory. Napoleon skillfully used art as a tool for propaganda and to reinforce his image as a powerful and heroic leader. Artists were commissioned to create grandiose portraits, statues, and monumental works that depicted him in heroic poses, often surrounded by symbols of power and military triumph. Was a generous patron of the arts, providing financial support to artists, musicians, and writers. He established institutions such as the Académie des Beaux-Arts and the Musée Napoléon, now the Louvre, to promote and preserve the arts. His patronage helped to foster a vibrant artistic community and support the development of new artistic styles and movements. Recognized the power of art as a means of cultural diplomacy and used it to project French influence and prestige abroad. He commissioned artists to create works that showcased French achievements and sent them on diplomatic missions to other countries as gifts, reinforcing the notion of France as a cultural and artistic powerhouse. Napoleon's rule saw the construction of numerous grand architectural projects, including the Arc de Triomphe, the Madeleine Church, and the Vendôme Column. These monumental structures not only served as symbols of Napoleon's power and military victories, but also influenced architectural styles and urban planning in the 19th century. While Napoleon himself was associated with neoclassical art, his rule and the tumultuous events of his era had a profound impact on the development of Romanticism. The themes of heroism, individualism, and the celebration of emotion and nature that characterized Romantic art can be seen as a reaction to the rationality and order of the neoclassical style. Napoleon Bonaparte's impact on art and culture extends beyond his own time, shaping artistic movements and inspiring artists for generations to come. His patronage, aesthetic sensibilities, and the cultural policies he implemented continue to be studied and celebrated, providing valuable insights into the intersection of art, politics, and the pursuit of greatness.